The second piece of advice that you gave me uh, is probably one that's really difficult for kids my age to like be okay with, mm -hmm. um, and that is stay single. Um, mainly because, I, and I've told you this before, you know, kids my age uh, are just they're, they're lonely a lot of the time, and they, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they they hello. feel like you know they feel like they married need, the wrong person. Uh, you know, yeah, that's you know, what happens <laughs> when you are so lonely that you just. Mm -hmm. You need something. There's there's codependency. There's you know all mm -hmm. those all those big fancy therapy words. We're meant for companionship. We, we are. just are. I mean, the, the Bible literally says, you know, it's, it is not good for a man to be alone. And, mm -hmm. You know, so. But, and my parents got married at 20, and um, they are still together, and everything's great. Sure. For me, that wasn't that as a first kid though, and you're an only child, so it kind of we had this a similar, uh, you know, in terms of like the space between your parents and you. That was what I was looking at, and their marriage is fantastic. So I thought there's nothing wrong with that. Whereas someone else might be uh, might grow up in a broken family and be like, marriage is not the way. And so, but for me, that's all I wanted. That's all I, I just wanted what they had, and um, that meant I made a lot of mistakes because I missed a lot of glaring, waving flags that mm. this is not the same person. So I'm glad to say I did find the right guy, but Marcus, it, yeah. yes, it, it did take forever to figure out what exactly that was. And it's really mostly stemmed out of loneliness. I did not want to be alone. Wow. So my advice to you is be alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did that and much more. Yes, yeah. okay, so continue. <laughs> Stay single. Until yeah. it's time is, right. is really what it was. Stay single, dot, dot, dot. So you say stay single until it's time. Um, I mean, how do you know when it's time? What's the, I mean, because that's the ultimate question, you know, because you, cause you, I think you could, you, you'd probably agree, you know, stay single so that probably, you know, you want to find yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to find out who you are, at, like, by yourself yes. first and, 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 and hope that, you know, obviously your spouse is, or, or significant other is finding themselves out, you know, figuring, figuring themselves out yeah. as they are individually. And right. then when you come together individually, it just, when you, when you know yourselves, Better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, 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 I think it, I think it. Really You're really is. answering the question. Um, <laughs> thanks all for you, stealing yeah. all the thunder. <laughs> no, when you find who uh, yourself, um, when you find out who you are, what you're, what you're made of, um, what you tolerate, what you want, you're able to see when someone else is doing the same. When you are, uh, I'll take my personal life as, exa as the example. I went from relationship to relationship and I never cleaned up the mess that was me during that time. And so I kept attracting broken because I was broken. So when you get broken, 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 ultimately I married someone who saw the broken girl and, and liked that version of me. And then when I started to change and get grow a little bit, he didn't like that anymore because that's not who we got. And I'm sitting here going, but I'm growing. And we didn't have this conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this like, I'm growing. Why wouldn't that be a good thing for you too? But he didn't want that version because he preferred the version he, he saw beforehand. And so here we are married and it's not working. And I'm feeling like I'm being capped. And I'm wondering why I feel badly all the time. And it's because when we got uh, together and married, I hadn't done the self work. I hadn't done the stuff that would help me understand my own worth, my own value. And that made all the difference. When I met my now husband, Marcus, it was clear that we both had been doing all that. Mm -hmm. And that we were, and, and I'm floored every day. Wow. That he, he looks and he'll say like, hey, no, I'll help you with that. And I'm like, what? You know, I'm still, wow. he's, he's exactly what I've always been looking for. I told you, I've been working on this like breakup course. Yeah. And it's something I recommend for anybody. Not, the course is not like to give you work or homework or anything, but it's like, it's a lot of deep questions. So yeah. Yeah. if you're not interested in going to therapy or you don't have the money to, like this is a cheaper version. Also, it's something you can do at your own pace. But that is the whole point of making it. It's for that person to be like, okay, I know better, like you know you need to be single, but you don't want to be single. Uh, that's going to be the, the issue up until the, you write the, find the right person. Because if, you're, if you have your brain and your heart, they're working with each other sometimes, but mostly they're at odds. And if you know you should probably stay single because you got some stuff to work on, this is something that can help you do that. What I used to do versus what I finally did um, with Marcus is that I used to, and I think everyone does this, girls might be more honest about doing this, but I think guys do it too. You go into a relationship and then you start to like 
mentally go through everything. Like you kind of mm. see all the options, like if this were to go. And so you start to write a story um, of what it could look like if this were, were the right person. I'm not gonna be alone again. I have, uh, you know, like a, what, this is gonna be the beginning. We can tell our children. Mm -hmm. um, and so you start to like fantasize about if this were to work. Right. And while that's not wrong, it does sort of give you a false sense of how it is actually going. But right. reality was always a little less shiny and I wasn't, I was so focused on that that I wasn't focused on looking at for flags. Um, with Marcus, I was so done with anything. I wasn't even in that mindset of like fantasizing about how this could work. I can move to Aspen, I could be this. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. So I, I basically just talked to him. And then we started FaceTiming a little bit here and there. And then my grandfather actually passed away. He was um, a fantastic composer, Ron Huff. And um, so my grandpa has had Parkinson's for almost 30 years and he was in the hospital. And that's when I noticed that on my way out to the, the hospice uh, place, which when you go to hospice, you, you can't choose where you go because it takes, you have to go when you have to go. So there are only a certain amount of room. So we went to one that was like 45 minutes away from Nashville. And so I had a long drive every day during the worst time of traffic after work to get to the hospice um, to go hang out with um, my grandma and my grandpa up there. And uh, I talked to Marcus there every day. And I found, and then all of a sudden he stopped calling or he stopped like whatever. Mm -hmm. And it freaked me out because <laughs> Playing I hard to get. no. First of all, he I found out later he was trying to give me space. But oh, God, yeah. tell me that. But he thought I, you know, this is a hard time for your family. I, I'm his first grandchild, whatever. And so yeah. he was trying to be the adult here. But what that when he stopped like reaching out as much, I realized how much I missed talking to him because of the conversation. Wow. Because there was no way. I mean, there were nothing. Nothing was simple about. It our budding relationship, something big was going to have to happen. Right. I was going to have to move or he was going to have to move. And he's a periodontist, which is an oral surgeon. I did not know what that was until I met him. Um, a, a, a version of an oral surgeon. It's not, he like does wisdom teeth and things of uh, that nature. He grows bone in your mouth. It's kind of magic. Um, yeah. So he's right. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's really, really good at his job, but he has a practice. So I was like, sure. I don't want to move. I, I'm finally good. I'm happy. So because I saw no future, I think that helped me not have the grand uh, storytelling event that I normally would have. And I just, I was like, okay, I, I miss this person, why? And so we all ultimately met in person and the chemistry was just as much there, which was great. Um, a year and one day later, we got married. So in a way though, like when you saw each other in real life, mm -hmm. that uh, love at first sight. Oh yeah. 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 And, and you know, I, I because I had been married and uh, divorced before, I was a little uh, gun shy, I guess, about sure. that kind of thing. Sure. I had had been having major anxiety attacks um, on any date. I had gone on in Nashville, could go home to my house in 15 minutes if I wanted to. But when I was with Marcus, I, I was ready. I had all the ginger tablets <laughs> and um, the my nausea medicine, oh, just yeah. in case, because yeah. that was a you thing I yeah. I dealt with before. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I used to get, it got, it got so bad that I would throw it for 24 hours. And it was, yeah, it was not, it was not cool. Uh, so I was like, okay, here I am going to meet this person in a different state. Like, wh what are you thinking? This could be very bad. Um, and uh, the moment I saw him in person, it's, it was the physical manifestation of talking to him on the phone. I was instantly calm and I felt like I could be myself. So what I would say to you is if you are, Figure out who you, who you are first. Then you'll know when you're not being yourself. You can't figure out who you are, like if you're not being yourself, if you don't know actually know what baseline is. So figuring out baseline is key. And the way you do that is by being around people who make you feel good. So uh, that may be your family, that may be some of your friends, but starting to notice if you feel like a little like uh, turning in your belly, uh, something, you can't quite place it. It's not going to be like, this is wrong. Like no one's going <laughs> to type that in front of you. Uh, you might get some feedback from other people saying this might not be good for you. But it, for the most part, your gut, you start to train yourself to pay attention to your gut. Um, anxiety and your gut are very in uh, inextricably linked together. How you feel up here will make you feel a little bit different down there. And don't just chalk it up to in uh, the issues with your digestion. It might be something bigger, like everything else knows, but you that something's up. So to me, that was my biggest thing that all of a sudden with the right person, none of those things happened. And I've not had one of those episodes ever since.